I should be writing number 495 for Wednesday, April 15th, 2020. Well, I should be writing. I should be working on my Hi there, welcome to I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe fiction writers. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty. And you know, in an alternate universe, we would all be stressed out by taxes right now. Okay, in America, we'd be stressed out by taxes right now. It's kind of funny to think about it like that. In reading The Artist's Way, reading of Finding Water, um, finishing chapter four today, one thing that struck me is half the things she wanted me to have the assignments were go out and do something. Go out and find a place that you feel sacred or safe or whatever, or creative, and just sit there for 20 minutes and go out and do this. And I'm like, wait a minute, I can't do that. It's so strange how we take this stuff for granted. No, I can't go out. It's weird. We've been binging a lot of cooking shows during this quarantine time. And we just watched uh, Zumbo's Just Desserts. It's an Australian cooking show where this renowned pastry chef shows you, like, one of the challenges is you have to recreate what he does, and another challenge is you have to do something according to a theme. I think I've talked about it before, because for some reason this show, more than any other, sort of gives me a big metaphor for the creative life. Because in the first season, there was a perfectionist who utterly melted down when something didn't go right. She was excellent. She was a great, great pastry chef. But when a couple of things went wrong, she could not handle herself. Uh, the way the, the program goes is you they give you the theme and you have a couple of hours to create whatever you're going to create. And then they pick the bottom two and they have to go into what they call the Zumbo test. And the two people have to work head-to-head -to, -head to recreate something that the uh, pastry chef created. And so even if you don't do well in the first round, you get a second chance. The second chance is a 50-50 shot to leave the show, but y you do get a second chance. It doesn't matter how bad you are in the first one. You still get a second chance. And so you have these people who, this person who almost always got dessert of the day instead of getting in the bottom two. And so she, one episode, she went from top to bottom and she freaked out. She couldn't handle it. And that's when I thought, this is a person who needs to fail. This is why rejection's good, people. Really. Because when you're rejected, you learn, hey, that didn't kill me. Okay. It sucked. But it didn't kill me, so I can try again. And then in, in season two, we just finished that one, and there were a lot of people who either ended up near the top or the bottom. And near the very end of the show, somebody was saying, you know, these two people have been in this, like, Zumbo test before, so they know what it's like. And the person who had never been in the Zumbo test, who by definition, had never had one of the two worst dishes, was at a disadvantage. She was so good she was at a disadvantage because she had never experienced what it was like to be in the high pressure, recreate, master pastry chef man's perfect dessert. And she actually, she was at least acknowledging this and not freaking out. She's just like, yeah, I mean, they've, they've been in this situation before and I never have. So they know what to expect and what the pressure is going to be like, and I don't. And even now I'm hearing people say that they've been rejected and it sucks, but you got to remember being rejected means you're a working writer. Being rejected means that it did not sell to that person at this time. It's a big distinction. 
It's not that it sucks. It's that it did not sell to that editor at this time. Chapter 4 in Finding Water also mentions the, the concept of just just get the work done, and if it sucks, it's okay. You, it's better to edit something that's terrible than try to create something perfect out of nothing. And um, I'm trying to remember that real hard. And also, if I just show up to work, again, if I can believe in myself, I know what I'm doing. If I just show up, that's the hard part, showing up and doing the work. Uh... The, the quote for today is, There are always reasons not to work. There are always other things vying for our attention. Then, too, there is the attractive and seductive notion that if we don't work now, later it will be easier. We will somehow be more in the mood. We will enjoy blessed confidence and joie de vivre. In my experience, that magical later never comes. Work is called work for a reason. It may be good, it may be rewarding, but it is often hard. And besides, mood is a dangerous friend. I did get some work done today. I was proud of myself. I showed up, and like I said I was going to do yesterday, I started the book from the beginning and started reading through, so I remember where certain things are revealed. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I've added maybe 500 words today, but also polished a good deal, so I'm definitely not going to discount that. I keep saying I'm going to do this, but I haven't done it yet. But tonight, I'm going to sit down and read The Artist's Way, Chapter 4, and talk about that tomorrow, because it's <laughs> it's my least favorite part. And the thing is, it stands out as my least favorite part. I can't even tell you what my favorite part is, because I just remember doing The Artist's Way and it being really rewarding. But I do remember my least favorite part. It's always like, if you get a review of glowing, glowing praise... And they mention, yeah, but some of her action scenes are a little weak. That is all you will remember. And that, I hate the way our brain does that. I always feel like a, uh, like a compliment is a feather and a criticism is a brick. The feather feels nice and soft and pleasant. But you know when the brick hits you. So that's my thought for the day. Again, I hope you and yours are staying healthy and safe and inside and washing your hands. And if you have to go out, I hope you have a mask. And if you're not wearing one and you can, then good Lord, why? Please, please protect the people around you. And protect yourself. I'll talk to you tomorrow. MightyMertGmail.com is how you find me. Until then, you should be writing. Remember, you can support the show at patreon.com slash mightymer. I should be writing the theme music provided by John Emilio. You can find more about him at johnemilio.com. This podcast is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license. But I should.